So you guys are going to get to see the combo here. Like I mentioned, always auto attack before and after all of your abilities. It's going to greatly increase your DPS and give you a bit of a higher chance to get that true one shot without having. And truly, this character has enough damage to, as we run into the Ravon here, the Hercules is also here, which I'm not really too scared of the Hercules, I'm extremely far ahead, and I do a lot of damage to him, coupled with the penetration from our second ability, the extra bonus damage from our one, and just our how far ahead we are, we can pretty much deal with him no issue. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can get this Ravon as well, uh, alting him like that, the King Arthur will give me a guaranteed hit on my one, and I should be able to chase him down, instantly going to the alt because I also want to kill this Tiamat. Uh, and it should be pretty easy as well. Aegis, no issue. I do see three people over here, but I'm far enough ahead towards where I don't really mind if there are three people. I can take care of the Tiamat and then blink on the health. I'll always remember auto type before and after your abilities for that extra damage. Hello, hope you guys are doing well. Today, I'm super excited to bring you guys some Thanatos gameplay and similarly to my usual videos. Uh, I'm going to be going over Thanatos' abilities for those of you who don't really know what uh, he does or don't play him. Uh, and then we're going to go over some tips and tricks and then we'll finish the video off with, off with the build. Uh, you did get to see the build at the very start of the match. Uh, just in case your only reason for clicking on this video is because you need a Thanatos video. Or build, sorry, I can't talk today. Uh, there it is. Uh, with that out of the way, I don't have much of an intro. If you're wondering why the start was a bit different to maybe what you're used to it's because our mid laner was afk uh, for the very start uh all right so let's go ahead and get started uh, right into the passive harvester of souls this has three parts so there are three parts to this passive uh, i'll explain the first two and then i'll explain the last one uh last <laughs> so the first part of this passive is that dealing the killing blow so if you get the last hit on enemies whether it be minions or enemy gods uh, you're actually going to gain a pretty large amount of health back based on how much health the target that you killed had uh, and this is maximum health now moving forward if you do kill an enemy god so if you kill an enemy god and get the last hit you're actually also additionally to the health that you gain are going to get five seconds off of all your active cooldowns which is very very important very big part of the kit five seconds off of your cooldown is no small amount uh, moving on to the third part, the reason I chose this part for last is because I have to talk a bit about the ultimate here. Uh, the ultimate has what is called an execute. What this means is that no matter what flat number of health the enemy has, as long as they're under a certain percentage, you can insta-kill them basically no matter what, uh, unless they Aegis. And what this means is... Uh, I mean, I don't really have to tell you guys what it means, uh, I think you'll get it, and I'll go a bit more in depth into it once we get to the ultimate, but just know this, because this is a part of his passive as well, whenever an enemy god is under that threshold, if you will, where they can just be executed, uh, then you can actually see them uh, either on your minimap, anywhere on the map, or you can actually see them through walls uh, as well, you can basically see them as if they were your team, regardless of whether it there is anything gaining vision for you or not uh, so that's the passive a pretty long one so it took a bit of time to explain it but let's move on to the first ability uh, so the first ability is a line attack it's going to stop on enemy god's hit and this is the ability that i max first it's not the ability that i level first i level the three for clear level one but then i max this ability why it does an insane amount of damage uh, even if it is just single target uh, as we try to kill this Tiamat, I doubt she'll put up too much of a fight. You should be able to kill it pretty easily. Uh, so like I mentioned, it does a lot of damage. Uh, it does a couple of other things as well. Uh, so on top of doing a pretty large amount of damage, it also does bonus damage based on how much health they have, 10%. Uh, so this is actually pretty decent against tanks because depending on how much health they have, uh, the more health they have, the larger that this bonus damage is going to be. Furthermore, you're actually going to heal for 50% of the damage dealt, and you're also going to slow the enemy for 20%, so a lot of things packed into this ability. Um, I will tell you this ability has the ability to, to basically half-shot the squishies and heal you pretty heavily. Uh, and considering so far we have healing from both the passive and also healing from the first ability, uh, this is a god very much centered around sustaining 
through one way or another. Also, one thing that I forgot to mention on Thanatos, when you cast an ability, you're actually going to be using up a percentage of your health and also your mana. So usually when you cast abilities, you just uh, consume mana. With this character, you will consume health as well. Just know that it's not a large amount of health that you're actually going to be losing. And considering that you're actually killing the you know enemy minions or, or jungle camps uh while you are doing this it actually kind of balances out with your passive healing you when you get the last hits it's not a lot of health that you're actually giving up and you can't actually die from using abilities it won't allow you to cast an ability if you're under that certain amount of health that would end up killing you uh, anyways it's very rare with how much sustain this character has that you're actually going to get to the point where you can't cast an ability uh, because you are too low health it is going to be very niche situations in which the enemy team got you low enough uh, to, to make it so that you can't cast an ability. And if the enemy team got you that low, uh, I'm not really thinking that there's much survival going, you know, much chance of survival, if you will. Uh, moving on, the second ability is very interesting. Uh, again, uh, an ability that does quite a lot. First of all, when you cast this ability, you are going to gain movement speed uh, and quite a lot of movement speed. The cool portion of this video, or this video, this ability, sorry, is if you are running at someone under the threshold of the ultimate, you are going to double this movement speed. It was already an immense amount of movement speed. Now, you can literally zoom across the map. If you are walking at someone uh, that is under the threshold of being executed with your ultimate, not only can you see them on the map, across the map, and on your mini-map, but you are literally just... 60% movement speed towards them. It's insane. Uh, and then also you'll get some flat penetration, which is very important. Uh, it's a lot of flat penetration. Honestly, enough to make it so that in the early game, uh, in the early game, this ability, even though you're not leveling it with another one or two uh, flat penetration items, is going to ensure that you're doing true damage to the squishier characters throughout the remainder of the match. Once this is level 20, you gain enough flat penetration to completely max out and deal some true damage um so very very interesting ability again just to re reiterate penetration movement speed uh and also you gain an immunity to slows which i don't think i uh mentioned uh moving on to your third ability you just saw me use it there this is a cone ability uh and this one's very simple i think uh in contrast with the rest of his kit this one's pretty simple uh, you're going to swing your scythe in the cone in front of you, dealing damage and silencing enemies. Uh, again, very, very interesting that you get this ability to silence enemies. Uh, specific kind of abilities that are channeled. Very, very cool that as an assassin, you can just stop the enemy team from, you know, hitting you with these abilities. Uh, think if you weren't silenced by a Nox and she just hits you with a 1, uh, silencing, silencing her and completely getting rid of that form of CC. Uh, there are a lot of examples in, of cases when this would be uh, useful. One that you might come across in the jungle is silencing a Tsukiyomi as he's trying to get a stun off. Possibilities are endless. Very, very cool that this character has a silence. Uh, I don't think any other assassin does have one. Uh, and it does a decent amount of damage. Late game, you can actually pretty much, uh, you know, quarter health somebody with this ability. Uh, but now let's move on to the main event. Uh, the main event is the ultimate. Uh, you've heard me talk about the ultimate throughout the entire kit because it has such significance. Uh, and that's one really cool thing about this character is his kit is so interconnected with itself. I feel like we don't get much characters like this anymore where the kit, the all the abilities kind of work together in one way or another. Uh, where the ultimate threshold has resonant throughout his entire kit, whether it be the passive, whether it be the second ability right um very very interesting uh, we don't get much characters like these anymore uh, but like i mentioned this is going to be an ability in which you go cc immunity and after a short channel time where you're just standing still cc immune uh you can see me use it here you're going to be going up in the air and then you can choose to land uh on a target location and it's going to be a circular target location if you were to land on somebody and not not under the threshold you're going to actually deal some damage stun them uh, for 1.5 seconds and then also like i mentioned if you were to if they were to be under the threshold which does increase the more you level this ability then they'll just insta die and you'll get like i mentioned your health uh, quite a lot of health for 
one-shotting them basically with your passive. Uh, so very, very interesting ability. And like I mentioned, the most important part um, is that you, like I mentioned, can execute people. This is important for a couple of reasons. Just for those of you who don't understand what an execute is, it's not X amount of damage dealt. It's if they are under this percentage of health, then they will insta-die. Uh, and what that means, for example, just to give you perspective, is if you're talking about a mage that has under 2000 power, then 30% of their health isn't going to be a big number. Uh, but a to a character that has, you know, reaching 4000, that's doubling the amount of health. So you can one shot someone with double the amount of health as a mage. Uh, so 30% of a bigger number is a bigger flat number than 30% of a smaller number. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. It means it makes it very easy for you to kill the tankier targets without actually depleting their health all the way down to zero. Uh, so very, very interesting. Uh, now, I will also let you know that you are going to get some increased movement speed while you're up in the air. Uh, and it's actually quite a large amount using your second ability and then alting again you'll get that movement speed in the air as well uh, so overall pretty interesting kit really really drive towards this true assassin i'm just trying to one shot someone uh, this character throughout the mid game has this threat that if you don't have beads and ages and you get hit by the ult he can do his entire combo now what is the entire combo just in case you're wondering uh, you're going to ult them, landing on them, and again, this is going to be at full health. You're going to ult them, uh, and again, you're going to do damage with your ult, and you're going to also stun them. Take this time when they are stunned to auto attack into the one, auto attack into the three, auto attack, uh, you know, continue auto attacking. Uh, the interesting part about this is that you are going to want to auto attack in between and after each ability. So before and after, sorry, auto attack one, auto attack three, auto attack two, uh, you know, auto attack two, auto attack. No matter what order you're using your abilities in, I want you to auto attack in between everything. Uh, moving on, the ultimate gives you enough time to actually auto attack and fit a one in between. You're going to see me use the combo here. I land on the Tiamat, attempt to auto attack, use my one, auto attack a couple more times, use my three. Always weave in some auto attacks in between everything and maximize your damage. Now, that was a bit of an irregular combo because she had actually ulted for CC immunity, so I wasn't able to show off the combo as it would usually be used. Uh, but you guys get the point. Use auto attacks to your advantage in between your abilities. Uh, and talking about the build a bit later on in the video is going to uh, kind of give us a bit of a further reason to want to play in this manner. Um, this character is overall a very fast character. Uh, it's very, very hard to lock him down with his immunity to slows and his CC immune alt that takes him out of the battlefield at an increased speed. Uh, and then also the amount of healing that he has uh, cannot be understated. The amount of damage that he has cannot be understated. Uh, the reason maybe we don't see this character played a lot is because the one is hard to hit. It's going to take time for you to get used to hitting that one. Uh, and then a bit same with the ultimate because it's very, very predictable. Uh, but once you get these factors down, you're going to be unstoppable. Also, this character does quote unquote fall off in the late game. Uh, there are ways that you can play to play around this, uh, but technically it's very hard to make him work in the late game because if you use your ult to try to do your full combo on someone, then you're most likely going to get killed. And if they have beats and Aegis, then they'll walk away free while you're giving up your life to ult. Uh, moving forward, uh, as I again want to show you the combo here, ultimate auto attack one, auto attack three, auto attack, and then follow up with a couple more auto attacks to get the kill eventually. <laughs> Usually it would kill regularly, uh, but again, Tiamat gets a couple of mitigations. But anyways, as I was saying, uh, falls off a bit in the late game because even if like the fights happen so separately uh, that by the time you alt someone it'll be a couple more seconds once the next fight breaks out then they'll have their relics back again so pay attention to who has relics who's used them uh, again here you're going to get to see the combo very very efficient combo uh, and if they don't beads or aegis you'll be able to basically easily pull off that combo in one shot anyone that you land on all right i think that's enough because we have to go over the build but before that i want to mention that my discord is down in the description do you want to talk or play with me or do you have any questions for me 
uh join the discord that's the easiest way to contact me uh and then furthermore if you just need people to play smite with we have a lot of people in the discord now so come join the community find people to play smite with uh, play or talk with me uh, and that's pretty much it. That's where I post all of my announcements, all of the events that are coming up. I'll let you guys know when I'm streaming. Everything is done through that Discord, basically. Uh, and then also, like I mentioned, streaming, follow my Twitch. I go live on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Uh, so come watch me play live if that's something you're interested in. Both links down in the description. Uh, with that out of the way, let's start talking about the build. Uh, with this, you want to build basically full power and penetration. You want to be able to continue to one-shot people. I see some people go Erendite. I don't agree with this because this character is already one of the fastest characters in the game. Why waste an item on Erendite, which gives you some power, uh, some cooldown reduction, which you would have already maxed out um, probably with your regular build not counting Erendite. Uh, and it's just you're not getting anything other than that. Uh, to get a couple of, you know, a bit of movement speed after you ult when you're already the fastest character in the game, it's just, it seems a bit redundant uh, in my mind. Also, if you were to ult someone and target and, and apply that target on them, so you can move faster towards that pl player, uh, if you ult someone and they don't insta-die, then you're either not building correctly, they either be an Aegist, or, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really sure you're messing something up, because if you're ulting someone... Uh, and they don't have their relics up. You don't need the movement speed. Uh, you know, the subsequent movement speed. They should die. Uh, but I think that's a reason why you won't see Iron Dart in this build. Uh, I have a couple of different substitution items for this build as well. Uh, but we'll go over them here. Uh, so starting off, I like Bumba's dagger a lot. Uh, listen, I really, really value cooldown reduction. If you want to go Eye of the Jungle, you can. Because, I mean... Simply put, Protector of the Jungle is very, very strong, specifically in this quote-unquote tank meta that we're in. Uh, again, very, very strong with the Protector of the Jungle. Uh, but I just clearly just really, really, really love the immense amount of power, the flat penetration, or sorry, percent penetration, and then also specifically uh, the cooldown reduction that I get from Bumba's Hammer to me is invaluable to my playstyle. Uh, but I wouldn't be mad or I wouldn't be against you guys going, um, what's the word? Protector of the Jungle. It's a very good item as well. Uh, moving on, Jotun's Wrath. I value cooldown reduction super heavily on this character. The more times you can go up in the air and land back down on someone and insta-kill them, the better it's going to go for you. The more times you can use your one, which kind of one shot, the better it's going to go for you. Not only in being able to one-shot people more often, but also for the healing. The more times you're able to use your two and gain that penetration and gain that movement speed, the better it's going to go for you. Uh, I'm thinking that cooldown reduction is probably the most important stat on this character and I want you to always have full cooldown reduction by the end of the game. Uh, the truth of the matter is, like I mentioned, uh, you want to alt as many times as possible so you can get in as many alts on that person in between them using their beads and ages, right? If you land on someone and they use their beads and ages, I want you to be able to ult them twice again before that Beads and Aegis is back up. Track their actives, track their actives, ask the the team, hey, are their Beads up? Are their uh, Aegis is up? You might be wondering, well, they might not answer, or they might give me wrong information, or they're never on comms, or I don't want to type. Join the Discord, find people to play with that are on comms, or the, you know, friendly people from the community. Uh, but like I mentioned, yes, get full cooldown reduction. Jotun's Wrath is not only going to give you flat penetration and power, uh, but it's also going to get you that cooldown reduction. Flat penetration is specifically very valuable in the early game, because like I mentioned when talking about the second ability, getting some flat penetration early allows you to do that true damage towards the enemy team, uh, which in turn is going to mean you just straight up do more damage. True damage, no matter what the amount, is very, very strong. Uh, moving on, Brawler's Beat Stick. I needed um, heavy, they have heavy, heavy healing. Hell, um, you know, we have a Hell, they have a, a Soul, they have a Hercules that we have to deal with. All of this means we need, need, need some anti-heal. So I decided to go for the Brawler's Beat Stick. If they have no healing at all, if they have a little bit of healing, I recommend still going that item, Brawler's Beat Stick. If they don't have any healing at all, Serrated Edge is also a very, very good uh, option as well 
uh, maybe third item. If you're going Serrated Edge and not Brawler's Beast Stick, I would recommend going Hydra second item and then Serrated Edge after. Uh, but if you are going Brawler's Beast Stick like I did here, and like I do mostly, because again, even if they don't have a lot of healing, I still value the anti-heal quite a lot. More flat penetration, more power. After that, going to Hydra's Lament. Uh, Hydra's Lament, put simply, it makes it so that you do bonus damage every single time that you auto attack after using an ability. We mentioned earlier how easy it is to do, throw auto attacks before and after each ability that you use, which means you're constantly applying this extra damage. And also when you're doing your full combo, considering you're throwing out three auto attacks after every ability or after your full combo, all with this bonus damage, it just ensures that no one can get away from you in your combo in terms of barely getting away with enough health. Uh, and then also it's just a bunch of bonus damage even when you're not ulting. Uh, after this, I'd like to go into some form of percent penetration. I went for the crusher here because the attack speed also kind of helps a bit with the combo. Just being able to throw out those attacks just a bit faster uh, feels very, very good for me. Uh, but also there are a lot of options. Uh, I like to finish it off with Heartseeker. Uh, if they don't have like a tank if they're missing like a tank like they have a mage in the solo lane or a mage in the support lane or an assassin in the solo lane anything like that you can actually not get heart seeker because you have enough percent penetration with your starter item and your fourth item uh and this being considered uh, if they don't have that many tanks and there's no point in wasting so many items to counter the tankier characters when you already have a lot of flat penetration so then you can go into something like for example a blood forge that way, after you kill someone, you can get that movement speed, you can get that shield, uh, and it gives you a decent amount of power as well. The real issue here, or not the issue here, uh, I want you, when you build, to talk more about, or think more about stats and uh, items. Find a way to get your cooldown reduction, your power, your penetration, uh, but you don't have to really think about the item itself. Right? I gave you a build here, but I want you to pay more attention to what I want you to get in terms of stats which is power, penetration, and max out your cooldown reduction. If you have another better way that works better for you of getting these four stats um, as close to the max as possible, then you can go ahead and go for that yourself. Uh, basically, buy the stats, don't buy the items. Items change, items are better this right now, and they'll be worse later, and they'll be nerfed and buffed. Don't remember the item, remember the stats that you want, and look through the store, look through the different items that are offered, and build accordingly. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something. Uh, we're coming up on the point where they are about to surrender. So I want you guys to, or I want to remind you guys that I do post daily on this channel, uh, guides, uh, informational videos, straight up gameplay of all types of different gods and all types of different roles. Uh, so make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of that. If you've yet to join the discord, it's down in the description, join the discord. Uh, I'm super excited to see you guys join, and I'll see you there. Uh, with that out of the way, I think I have very limited time before they surrender. So yeah, uh, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Love you. Bye.